morning guys I'm gonna do a really quick video this morning I was actually trying to um, do one on yesterday and um, I uh, I kind of got well I messed the video up and so um, I'm gonna try to do it this morning but since I'm on my way to work it's like I, I gotta hurry up so that that'll actually help me because I can kind of get right to the point uh y'all please like and subscribe um to the channel thank you all for listening and watching and just taking time out to even hear me you know i appreciate that you know but let me get to the point so um i did a video i was trying to show you all my little my little um new tapestry that I got. I, I really, really, really liked it. And, um, but anyway, um, the video on yesterday was talking about how so many black men seem to have a problem with buying anything for a woman. Uh, they're, they're taught by these gurus not to be, um, romantic and, and, and linger with a woman, uh, don't even really spend a lot of time on the phone with her, uh, which everybody texts now, and it's crazy, um, not to, what did I say, spend money on her, not to be intimate with her as far as, not sex, when I say intimate, intimacy, I mean spending time, kissing, hugging, wanting to be around her, spending time with her, all those things are intimacy. Um, and just basically treat her like a prostitute, basically. And so these are very, a lot of these are good women who actually are, and these men know, looking for a relationship, looking for something long-term. But because of this bitch hole mentality, all of this uh, baby mama, black women ain't shit type of mentality. Um, that's how they're treating women. That's how they're treating women. And I, you know, the point of what I was saying is that they do that. And it's like when you ask the question, well, then why don't you just get a prostitute? You don't, you don't have to worry about her calling you. You don't have to worry about calling her, checking up on her. You know, there is nothing serious. You just see her whenever you want to see her. You're not kissing, hugging, but you're just going, getting your, your thing off, and that's it. Which is how, like I said, so many of them already treat regular women out here, <laughs> you know? And so my thing was that, well, you know, because the short answer is, oh, they don't want to spend no money. You know, you know they don't want to spend no money on them. Okay, maybe. And I think that is a part of it. I think, and I believe that most of them just feel like the black woman is not worth it. So, because we know that they spend money on Becky, Maria, and, you know, Jen Lee. We know that they spend money on them because they have to. So anyway, the point was that I don't think it's just about money. I really don't. I, I think money may be a part of it, but I think the real thing is a lot more sinister in that I think it's to, I think it's for them to purposely show that, to, to purposely make the black woman feel that feel not special, feel like I'm not kissing you, feel like I'm not coming. I I think it's a lot more sinister than just not wanting to pay the money. I think they're really wanting to make you feel bad. And the reason I say that is because so much of the things that I see, I'm I'm not around a lot of black men anymore. Um Maybe some of it's because I'm not in the South. I don't know. Maybe it's just like my lifestyle and just, you know, I'm, I'm, um, I don't really have a whole bunch of bunch of social like going out there. Like get up and go out 
and and pay for things and go to events, you know, when I want to. But like just having, because like my family's not here, you know, so I don't have a lot of them around, but I still know. <laughs> and so, um, but I see the intention behind being nasty, being ugly, rolling their eyes at you just purposely. Because I'm going to tell you something. The only time I really truly see a black man just like looking at me in this city is if I'm with a non-black man on a date. Oh, they will stare me down to, to make sure I see the eye contact. And once they get the eye contact, then I get the nasty look. Which means nothing to me because I get the nasty look anyway. <laughs> because when they're with their white women or whatever, they do it anyway. And so it's just crazy. But what I did on yesterday is I was trying to give um, a few examples of just how black men obviously try to do stuff to to obviously let you see that they don't like you the the stuff that they say we see that all over social media the videos that they make we've been seeing that forever you know and it's very very intentional everything i really believe that black men do to black women is very intentional i don't think they're just well I do think there is, is very degenerate. I think it's very, very spiritual also. But I think the, the, the hurt, the jab is the intentionality behind it. It really is. Um, one of the examples that I gave was that I'm really not worried about getting to work on time too much today, guys, because we had a really, really big uh, snowstorm and it's crazy out there. and you know, so but I was going to be late anyway, just because of the weather. I gave an example on yesterday about how when I first got here to the city, and uh, it was my very first encounter with anybody, really, um, because I think we had like literally just got into town the day before. So this was the next morning. And as I explained, like, I'm coming, like, down um, out of the hallway of my apartments. I'm coming this way. This guy was coming that way. And so um, we kind of looked at each other, um, like, at the same time. And so he just, just nasty, nasty, dirty look, like I had scratched his car or something. Or like I'd been banging on his door all night or something. I mean, just a nasty look. And he went on out the door and let it slam. I'm I'm used to also. And so I was just like, wow. So fast forward, uh, a few hours later, my ex and I were leaving. Uh, uh not even not even a few hours, it was sooner than that. And um we're our car is like a car or a car over from um, uh, these people, and it was a white lady with two little biracial kids, a little boy, a little girl, if I'm not mistaken. And then I saw that guy who was a black guy, and I'm like, oh, okay. And it hit me real quick. I'm like, oh, well, maybe he, you know, thought I liked them or I was flirting or something or just whatever. And so he was trying to let me know he don't date black women or something. I don't know. <laughs> and so, but yeah, that was like the first, very first encounter. And I just always remembered it because I'm just like, that's so crazy, you know, but I'm, I'm telling you, it is so intentional here to, to see them, um, roll their eyes with, at you or, you know, especially if they're with a white woman or something like that, they will purposely like it's it's hard to explain some of you I'm pretty sure you all probably know but it's hard to explain exactly what I'm saying um but it's absolutely the truth of what what was happening or what happens and has been happening so um another thing that I used to notice is that I, I still notice it but 
it just started very early on was that um, at the grocery store, especially if there was a black checkout guy, um, a grocery store, Walgreens, um, dollar store, any of this. And these guys would, I would, you would see them, especially if it's a white woman. Oh, how are you today? How, oh, I hope you're having a great day and that you find everything you need. And, you know, laughing, talking, oh yeah, weather's great and blah, blah, blah. And as soon as they get to me, it was nothing. No smile, no none of that. No, how are you doing? No, none of that. And it was such and such, such and such is your total. And I'm just like, you know, and I'm it used to bother me because I'm like, it's so obvious, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that is so crazy, you know? Now, mind you, I'm from the South. And so, you know, even the thing with, with the guy, the first black guy that I saw, like my greeting. To, to being here in the city. Uh, I'm just used to saying good morning. I'm just used to that Southern hospitality, just used to people acknowledging one another. Um, but in this city, yeah, I've, I've learned the hard way that, yeah, they don't, they don't really speak <laughs> too much. Um, now, usually if it's a person that's not from here, they're very friendly. They're very, you know, and I can I can actually spot them now because I've been here long enough know, now to know the natives from someone who's not here. And yeah, they, they just, not a very friendly place all the time, you know. Uh, but anyway, so, and you know, I, I take Ubers, you know, to work, Uber, Lyft, whatever, I'll take it to work because it's not very far and um, I don't really drive. Uh, but so anyway, oh my God, I've had the worst experience. Every, every almost, I'm going to say 90% and probably a little higher of my experiences with Uber drivers that are black have been just oh my god they they it was so crazy about it is i never understood why you're so intentional with being nasty and ugly like first of all i don't really care i don't talk to the drivers really anyway i mean it's been very rare that i have will you know start a conversation with a driver usually i'm sitting in the back i'll say hello put my headphones on whatever i'm 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 going to my destination but, you know, and, and I speak just because it's just the right thing to do, but they will do everything they can not to, some of them just won't say nothing. Some of them will, morning, hey, well, you know, and like not even look at you, not acknowledge you, anything. And it's just, it's, it's crazy. I have been yelled at <laughs> black men Uber drivers. I have been just, okay, two examples. I hope I don't get interrupted, uh, but two examples. So the first example was just two days ago. Um, I'm going to work. Uh, the Uber, uh, I see the Uber coming. Now, the way that my apartments are, you kind of got to come into the driveway, make this little circle, whatever. And it, it depends on how you come in, but you know. Um, where I was, he would have had to loop around. And so I saw him come in <laughs> and next thing I know, and I know he saw me standing there with my coffee and everything. I'm trying to go to work. Next thing I know, dude must have turned around the same way and went straight out of the thing really fast and hit cancel. And I'm like, wow, wow. I knew why because I'm black but the craziness of it was why would you come all the way here see me and do that and then you know what I'm saying like that was a waste of time but once again I it was intentional because he wanted me to see him do that he wanted me to see him leave they they like 
for some reason, they like the shock value of hurting black women. They like the shock value of knowing I did something to you because most of us black women are not being that intentional with really anything toward them. Because most of us, once we have moved on or dating interracially or whatever, we don't really look back. We don't really sit back and, and make videos about them and talk about them the way that they talk about us. We just go live our life and be happy. But it's not the same with them. Uh, they leave, get their white woman, get their biracial children, everything, and yet they still stay over here with black women talking and saying stuff. And, you know, it's just crazy. It's like an obsession. The hate is so... It's like a mental illness is what it is. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video off. But yeah, it, it's, it's, it's more than them just not wanting to spend money on a black woman, you know. Um, it is them being intentional enough to show you that I don't want to spend no money on you. I don't want to kiss you. I don't want to hug. I just want to dump in you. And I just, you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't think it is all about money. I think it's that hurt factor of the shock value. I'm going to tell you another one real, real quick. This is maybe a couple of uh, months or so ago. I was taking um, an Uber or Lyft or whatever. And I was going um, just like somewhere in the neighborhood. And I was coming right back uh, to the house. So I did what they call like a, I added a ride. So, and it was a quiet day, my day off, I, you know, I'm just going to do this, come back. And only because I had to, because I, you know, wanted to rest on my off day. Wanted to go there and do that and come right back. So I got a black guy, got in, said hi, that was it. I don't even engage with them because they're so nasty, rude, and just, you know, I've learned my lesson a long time ago uh and so we weren't even far getting into like we literally had just left my house and I just asked him did it show up did I had a stop and was coming right back and um that was that was it that was all I said that's pretty much how I said it I didn't you know it wasn't even a reason to have an attitude with him so I asked him that and dude looked up in the uh, rearview mirror at me and went, yes, just like that. I mean, through gritted teeth, you could see the, the jaw thing, just like he just hated for me to say anything to him and hated to have to say anything to me. He was just like, yes. I'm like, okay. Didn't say anything else, whatever, got to where I was going. Of course, he was supposed to stay there, wait for me, come back. I get out, dude is gone. Just left. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy as hell. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, wow. And, you know, of course, I, I, I report their behavior. You know, I got something in my eye. I, I report their behavior, but, you know. Um... But anyway, um, I'm sorry, I got something in my eye. Um, yeah, I mean, I got so many instances of them just being nasty, rude, and just, just, just ugly. Letting doors slam in your face, they see you coming. Just uh, that's why now when I see when I'm in front of a, a uh, or behind a black guy here in this state, I I just start walking slow. I, or I'll turn around and, you know, pick something up or whatever, you know, because I don't, I don't even want to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? Even women will hold the door for you. I mean, all kinds of stuff, you know, but them, I'm telling you, they're nasty, rude, mean, and they let the door slam on you or whatever to, to, it's the shock value. It's the shock. The guy one at the, who left me. He wanted to, he wanted me to see and feel that and, and know. So it's crazy. Uh, but that's what I think. I think it's a lot more sinister. There's a lot of, a lot more reasons. I think that's behind a lot of this stuff that are spiritual. Um, I actually have a whole video thing that I, that I want to talk about concerning 
uh, that kind of behavior and, and the, the kind of spiritual uh, influence that I think is behind a lot of them and their behavior, which is demonic. It's, it's very demonic. But I have uh, I have a whole reason uh, about all of that. All of that. So you guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, go have a great day. Go make it a great day. Um, like, comment, subscribe, please. And until the next video, we'll see you next time.